welcome dear friends for another video uh, today we are going to talk about uh, types of controllers in control system in previous tutorial we have finished the basic concepts related to instrumentation and control and the objective of this tutorial is to have uh, just uh, revise the basic concepts in process and instrumentation uh, subject in order to perform dynamic simulation in Aspen Hisis. So let's move to the uh, next slide to know the learning objectives of this uh, tutorial. So in the end of this tutorial, you will be able to differentiate between discrete type, multi-step and the continuous type controllers. What is the difference in three different types of control modes? And then you will see why a controller needs tuning and after that we will put some light on the basic mechanism advantages disadvantages or limitation of different modes of controller action such as proportional mode or proportional action integral action and derivative action okay so let's just start the first one is discrete controllers so as it's uh, evident from its name that it's kind of a controller that has only two types or two modes of operation or position that are either it is on or off there is no intermediate position for control and the day-to-day uh, -day life example for this kind of controller is hot water heater so when the temperature of the water tank falls below the set point the burner turns on and when the water in the tank reaches below the set point the burner turns off so it's very simple example of uh, discrete uh, controllers uh, this type of control does not actually hold the process variable at the set point but keeps the variable within the uh, proximity of the set point which is known as dead zone if you look on the right hand side uh, picture you can see that this green line is representation of the set point and the this red oscillating line is the process variable okay so the process variable is oscillating across the set point and the the zone in which this variable is uh, oscillating is called dead zone so and this blue line represents the controller action so you can see that there are only uh, two step one this is uh, the controller uh, off position then on position off position on position and off position so this is the this is the simple representation of discrete controllers now the second type is multi-step controllers what they are uh, these controllers have actually at least one or more uh, other intermediate position apart from on off position and uh, the multi-step controllers operates very similar like to the discrete controllers but as the set point is approached the multi-step controllers takes intermediate action or intermediate steps so as a result the oscillation around the set point will be the limited okay so there sh there should not be a the the dramatic uh, oscillation across the set point when you are using multi-step controller so you can see compared to the uh, previous one the the range or the width of the dead zone is smaller in multi-step controllers compared to the discrete controllers and here you can see there is the intermediate step between on and off okay so the third type is actually the continuous controllers and uh, the example is uh, uh, of this kind of uh, controllers is actually the pid controllers okay so these are actually automatic uh, uh, controller that continuously compares 
the values of the process variable to the set point to determine if there is an error exist so the question here what is error error actually is the difference between process variable or the measuring variable to the given set point so this difference is called error so if there is error the controller is taking action until the error is completely eliminated so if there is an error the controller adjusts its output according to the parameters that have been set inside the controller and uh, this in this kind of controllers there are three different modes which are called proportional integral and derivative okay so the to tune this kind of uh, uh, controller we have to adjust few parameters so the first thing that we see is how much correction should be the made by the controller to eliminate the error so actually this is uh, this measures the magnitude of the correction or the change in controller output which would be the uh, position of the final control element is determined by the proportional mode of the controller so how much the magnitude of the error is being calculated or controlled by proportional mode in the PID control and how long the correction should be applied the duration in which the adjustment of the controller output is determined by the integral mode okay and how fast should the correction be applied the speed at which the correction is made is determined by the derivative mode of the controller so the proportional mode defines that the magnitude of error integral mode defines the duration of the adjustment how long it will the it will apply to eliminate the error and the derivative mode how fast okay let's move to the next slide where we will learn why controllers need tuning actually when we tune a controller we are seeking to achieve two objectives the first objective is we want that the system uh, uh, respond as quickly as possible to errors to to bring back the process variable to the set point okay this is the first objective to have the uh, tuning the second objective is when you are achieving this first ob objective the system remain stable it should not be destabilized process variable does not oscillate around the set point okay this is the uh, second objective that we uh, have to achieve okay so for tuning there is a important parameter that is called controller gain so let's first define what is it controller gain is simply a ratio between the change in the controller output to the change in controller input so it's the ratio of percentage or simple change in controller output to the change in controller input so the controller output is the uh, manipulated variable that would be the final control element in terms of posi uh, well positioning and the controller input is the percentage of error the difference between set point and the process variable so we are interested when we are doing tuning we are interested in adjusting the gain of the controller in a way that the change in the controller input will result in a change in the controller output that will cause sufficient change in the valve position or the final control element to eliminate error but not so much not so great a change as cause instability or cycling of the uh, process i mean okay we want that for example 
let's uh, elaborate or let's explain it in more detail you can see on this right hand side there is a graph of gain so if i have a gain 2 so it means that if the input to the controller is 50 percent the output would be the 100 percent so if the gain is high the response of the system will be very fast on the other hand if the input variable is 100 input uh, change in input uh, signal to the controller is 100 percent and as a result controller is generating output of 50 percent then the gain for that particular controller is 0.5 and this uh, controller is uh, uh, the the response of this controller is slow okay but we want the system response as quickly as possible so should we have always greater gain to achieve uh, uh to to respond the uh, disturbances fast is it true or not actually the answer is in the second uh, a second objective each loop has its natural frequency so if you increase the gain that frequency also increases and after a certain particular value the system became unstable and your process variable will never reach to the set point and it's always oscillating or damping around the given set point value okay i hope you grab the concept let's move to the next slide so here is the question for you so what do you think that the fast or the slow processes have no impact on the controller gain setting is this statement true or false just think about it for a minute and the answer is here for example if you have a plug flow reactor with the small volume liquid process okay so if there is some change happens inside here so the the, the this system is the fast system and we can say the fast process and the fast process may require less gain to achieve the stability so if you give the, this controller high gain value the system will become unstable because the small change in this valve position irrespective of uh, uh, with respect to the uh, input to the controller the output is is less then the system will uh, achieve stability nicely but if the gain is higher the system will become unstable on a contrary if the uh, the system is slow slow process such as the large volume of a gas process gas filling tank may require higher gain why they require higher gain because they need responsiveness okay if the gain is low the response will be very slow and uh, it will take very long time to achieve uh, uh, to eliminate the error okay so now we are going to uh, further uh, uh, see in detail three different uh, mode uh, of uh, PID control the first one is proportional mode its limits and uh, what is it so let's go through it the proportional mode is used to set the basic gain value of the controller okay and uh, the setting of the proportional mode uh, is expressed in two ways either by proportional gain or proportional band i already discussed about the gain here is the value or the the definition is the same the ratio of the uh, percentage of change in output of the controller to the change in uh, input to the controllers so it's called gain but what is the proportional 
band we can define it it is actually the throttling range of a controller in between uh, uh, during the process uh, to achieve to bring the process variable to to the set point the minimum value and the maximum value of the final control element position is called proportional band or we can say in more professional way prof uh, uh, proportional band is defined as the amount of change in the controlled variable required to drive the loop output from 0 to 100 percent so this output loop output 0 to 100 percent is actually the throttling range of the controller and the gain and proportional band are inversely uh, linked via this formula sorry so now uh, the advantage of the proportional mode is that it's simple the only advantage and uh, less complex in controller tuning you just have to tune the the gain parameter in the proportional mode but here are some limitation number one in proportional action it responds only to the change in the magnitude of the error and here the action will not return the process variable to the set point there is always uh, error or we can say the offset however it will return the process variable to a value that will be within the defined span that is the proportional band around the set point sorry around the process variable so this is uh, the some insights of the proportional mode here i am not uh, describing the mathematical model because it's out of scope of this uh, this scope so uh, uh, here i am just giving the basic information in order to uh, make in order to make you able to to do uh, uh dynamic modeling in aspenisis so let's move to the next one that is the integral mode so integral mode i already discussed that the 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 controller output from the integral mode is the function of the duration of error okay and the purpose the purpose of the integral action is to return the process variable to the set point okay or we can say that the main uh, thing that we achieve by using the integral mode into the controller is to eliminate the error so this is accomplished by repeating the action of the proportional mode as long as an error exists so actually the the errors uh, the difference between set point and the process variable is continuously sending to the controller as the input and the controller is continuously generating the output but in the form of integral so it, it remains it, it it these calculations remains continuous until there is an error so this this uh, the addition of this mode simply completely eliminate the offset that is, that is uh, present in simple proportional mode but here the limitation or the disadvantage of integral mode that it can introduce the overshooting of the uh, controller output the next one is the derivative mode so derivative mode that we see that it uh, defines the speed of uh, the response how fast the uh, 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 manipulation will be done so the derivative mode is a function of speed of change or the rate of change of error and its units are minutes and the action is to apply an immediate response that is equal to the proportional plus uh, reset action that would have occurred some minutes in future okay so actually derivative mode uh, takes the derivative of uh, the change of process variable or maybe the change of error and predict in future 
the uh, uh, and uh, maintain the process variable to the set point as fast as possible so the advantage here is rapid output reduces the time that is required to return process variable to set point in slow process and the disadvantage is that the it dramatically amplifies the noisy signals so if there is a noise it will simply dramatically uh, destabilize the system and can cause the cycling in the fast processes so in general or in conclusion we can say that by using the three control algorithm together a process operator can achieve a rapid response to major disturbances by using with the help of derivative control hold the process near the set point without major fluctuation with proportional control and eliminate the offset with integral control but here i want to say that it is not always necessary to use bid control strategy for all the processes if a small offset has no impact on the process then proportional control alone may be sufficient and the process is uh, the pi control is used where no offset can be tolerated so where noise how we can uh, define noise the temporary error readings that do not reflect the true process variable condition where the noise may be present and where excessive dead time now what is dead time time after the disturbance before control action takes place so where the excessive dead time is not a problem you can use pi control and in the end in the process where no offset can be tolerated no noise is present and where dead time is an issue then the customer should use full pid control so that's all for today's lecture i hope you understand it you like it and uh, if you think that this tutorial make some difference in your knowledge please don't forget to like subscribe and share my channel thank you for watching and uh, uh, stay tuned for upcoming videos until next video bye bye